Britt Baker versus Taya Valkyrie. I just want to point out that Taz, whose whole gimmick for like three decades now, two, uh, two and a half, is that he's pissed at the entire world. He notes that Taya Valkyrie was trained by Lance Storm. And Lance is so nice that even Taz calls him my old buddy Lance Storm. <laughs> well, of course. That made me laugh. So the first portion of this match was quite bad. They're just out there doing some stuff. No one cares at all. And then Taya hooks her for a road to Valhalla. And I'm assuming Britt was supposed to counter it or something because there's no reason to hit this finish in the middle of the match. But whatever was supposed to happen is not what happened. What happened is they both just fell down. Was it supposed to be the road to Valhalla she was setting her up for? She was setting her up for it. It was some wheelbarrow spot. Regardless, Britt just falls in her face. Taya just falls in her ass. They royally fucked this whole thing up. And if you look at Taya's face, Taya is well aware they have royally fucked this whole thing up. And it's just a complete disaster. At that moment, they went to break. And to their credit, they worked their ass off. And they took a crowd that was not into this match. And then it started to fall apart. And they just stood toe-to-toe and started wailing on each other. Which no one on the show had done before, which is another reason every show on your card should, or every match on your show should be different. Every match on your card should be different. That's so what they all work better that way. So the crowd finally gets into this, and because they got into it for the brawling, then they got into it for the big moves at the end. Britt tries the Road to Valhalla again, but it's countered into the lockjaw, and Taya immediately taps out. Like, she tapped out so quickly, I wasn't even sure the hold actually got put on, but I rewound it, and she, it did very, very briefly. And in the end, they get like a huge ovation. The ultimate yes. sign of a good match is one where the people are not into it when it starts, and they love it by the end. And then, some cameraman or director made the regrettable decision to zoom in on a sign reading, Book the Women's Division Better. Yeah. That's not a choice I would have made. Well, you know, it's been a topic of conversation for the last couple of weeks now. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, now they have a microscope on them. And so you have a match here, and yeah, it was not good early at all. And so, you know, go on the internet today and everyone's making fun of both of them and showing that spot and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you know, it did turn into a good match. They did get the crowd after the break. Like, that's the whole point of this business. Yeah, shit's not always going to go right. It went very wrong in this match. But you hold it together and you get back on the same page and you get the crowd from not caring to caring a lot when it's over. And I thought that by the end, I thought they did a very good job at the end getting on the same page and making everything work. And I don't think that they deserved the criticism they got all over the Internet today. But, you know, it's funny. Someone mentioned, they go, you know, these people want women's wrestling so badly, but man, do they bury it when they get it. <laughs> it's like, you know, you're right. Maybe, maybe everyone should stop listening to the fucking Internet would probably be the, the best course of action. And, uh, you know, you got women. Put them on the show. Mm-hmm. You know, you write stories for all the men. Write yeah, some for the women. Exactly. Doesn't have to be all the women. No. But you can have a, a, a storyline. Pick the three or four you want to highlight. Going on in the next pay-per-view give and them, do it. Give them something to work with. That's it. Yeah. it. It should not be this complicated. And you know what? It is a, this is a horrible analogy, but I'll give it to you anyway. Never stopped you before. Yes. Everyone's like, well, yeah, but the, the, the wrestling... Dude, it ain't about the wrestling, okay? I realize that the AW audience has a uh, an expectation to see great matches. But at the end of the day, it's professional wrestling. And if you get a great story, you know, you know what's a great story? The hottest story in AW is MJF and Adam Cole, okay? Mm-hmm. Are they out there doing, like, a bunch of crazy shit? No. The opposite. They're, they're doing, like... Uh, a Black Label Pro match in the middle of the Midwest. And that's not a disrespect to Black Label Pro, but like, what they're doing, yeah. that's kind of match I did there. But anyway, it's over. The story is over. And probably, arguably, the greatest story in the history of professional wrestling was Austin versus McMahon. And those two fuckers didn't have one good match together. No, they're all. Not one. <laughs> to this day. Every single they, fucking they, one they tried was to get an atrocity. Last year. <laughs> And uh, it still worked because of the story. So do the stories, do the matches. It's fine. Like, I don't know what the big deal is here. 
Let's see. Uh, for Rampage, a couple of hype videos. Nyla Rose and wrestling Hikaru Shida, where Nyla wants to uh, destroy Shida. She wants to beat Nyla to get her out of the way so she can get to that title shot against Tony Storm. And then they're doing a tag team battle royal for a title shot. So we get Jay Lethal and the crew and Prince Nana and his crew and Ethan Page and Brother Zay and the Hardy Boys all going to win this battle royal. The winner of that gets a title shot against uh, the winner of the FTR versus Colin MGF match. And that's all fine and dandy. It is. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> we just had a battle royal a week ago. And none of these teams are like, there's no really rankings anymore, but they're not highly ranked teams. There's just some rando teams going to get a tag title match. Yeah. And then we got a main event with three main event teams. A team wins. <laughs> and this is setting up. A three-way singles match. That's what we'll get. We'll get to the main event. What? We'll get. To, well, not only that. I would like to add that one of the teams in action is a rampage or collision, whichever. But they advertise the kingdom in action, Matt Taven and uh, Michael Bennett. But they're not in the battle royal. No. So they can't get a title shot. No, they they're can't. An, they're an established team, way more than, for example, Ethan Page and Brother Zay. That's true. That confused me. Uh, video hyping up the Andrade versus uh, uh, Buddy Matthews ladder match. And then the main event, which, as you know, the three teams, the best friends versus the Lucha Brothers versus Moxley and Castagnoli. It was a party match. Guys are flying everywhere. Guys are uh, diving off the apron. Guys are di diving off the stage. Guys are doing a parade of finishers. Uh, Claudio was posed to finish somebody with something. When Orange Cassidy's music hit, and in fact, Orange Cassidy comes out he lays out Wheeler Yuta with the orange punch. He's going after John Moxley. Trent hits his sit out or sitting sit down pile driver thing the over the back pile driver dealy, and he's got the pin. But the referee says no, that man's not legal. Come on, <laughs> I'm not sure there was a tag in this you gotta match. Follow the rules, brother. Uh, like no one, no you gotta one, follow the rules. Nobody cared in this particular match who was legal. Shortly thereafter, the goddamn ref did. Yeah, shortly thereafter, Penta pins Trent with a fear factor. So there you go. The Lucha Brothers have won this three-way. What does any of this set up? By the way, uh, Shivani does this an upset when the Lucha Brothers are the only team here that has actually been the world champions. So I disagree with that. So the best friends are brawling with a Blackpool Combat Club. And I'm thinking, okay, so if that's the next feud, then why didn't Trent pin Claudio here in this match to build to that feud? What is the point? Of the Lucha Brothers winning. And suddenly the Lucha Brothers are brawling with everyone. And then they announce Mox versus Trent versus Penta. Frantically, they announce this for next week. And the show goes off the air. I got no idea what's going on. <laughs> I know. It's July 27th. All Out is August 27th. We're exactly one month away. Yes. We know nothing. <laughs> we know nothing for that show. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what's going on with this this main event feud. I don't know what's going on with the tag team title scene after after Saturday. It's a mystery. This was a very strange show, and it seemed to, except for the like the AR Fox stuff, which is a good story, a rushed story, but at least I could make sense of it all. Uh, a, a lot of st just stuff happening just to have stuff happen. You know, people are going to bring up, and it's true, that many times we don't have a card until just a couple of weeks before the show, and everything ends up all right. That's true. Okay. That doesn't mean that you can't announce it earlier and try to do better. Okay, number one. And the other thing, and this is the big thing to me, what do they got out right now? I think I, I, think I saw it today. I think WrestleTix had it up. Let me see how many tickets they've got sold. They're doing very well. Yeah, of course they are. Mm -hmm. they're, doing, they're doing fantastic. All right, uh, announced today by WrestleTix, they have 76,900 and 29 tickets out, okay? Now, the all-time paid record for professional wrestling, I believe, is 81 or 82 for that AT&T uh, Mania. WrestleMania. Yeah. So they're within 6,000 tickets, breaking the all-time record. I'd had a fucking full, hot-ass card announced yesterday, <laughs> and I would pump the shit out of that card for four weeks to try to get those last 6,000 fans. Because, yeah, you can announce it uh, two weeks in advance or whatever, but I want 82,000 fucking fans in this building. And if you've got to 76, 929, you're slowing down. It's a trickle now. 
So how do you open up them floodgates? You got to have a big fucking card. And uh, and we don't have anything yet. So that's why I realize it's going to do fine. I realize they've sold 76,000 tickets. I realize it's going to do great on pay-per-view. It can do better. You want to break 82? I need a card. Fast. Get those people. Like, let's say, let's say, forget UK. Let's say I'm on the fence right now. Should I go or not? Well, fuck, I got to buy a ticket. I got to get a hotel. I got to do all that shit. You want me to wait till two weeks before? I don't have a jet. I got to do what everybody else does and go on orbits. So the earlier you can give me a card, the better. So I can make my plans to go. So anyway, let's get a card going. Well, that was uh, Dynamite. And then yes, we- Leonard. They did 70000 without announcing a single match. You're right. And now they're at seventy six. We got six or 8,000 more that we need. So now it's time to announce some matches. Where are they? We're not here yet. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.